a court cannot therefore say that please invalidate this vote because it was motivated by a bribe suppose a person is convicted for the offense of bribery can a court say that therefore that vote should be excluded in computing the parliamentary majority suppose 20 members of the legislature are proved to have accepted a bribe that vote is still a valid vote not to pass in favor of or, or against the motion contextualized but the majority said we must read the constitution as it is written and there is a reason for it members need protection and then well, as far as criminal prosecution is concerned you can't differentiate between corruption and defamation if there is protection from criminal prosecution it has to be in all respects bullets as long as it bears a nexus in ajit's case bullets this honorable court sufficiently refined it bullets in the recent kerala assembly case if a member commits an act of vandalism or bullets take an extreme case of a physical assault then it is obviously not protected because by no standard can it be said to have a nexus bullets similarly that test make perhaps conceivably be applied to a hate speech situation on the floor of the house also bullets as to whether it had any nexus at all with the role of the member in the performance of his duties but millards once that immunity is there then we can't millards dissect it and say corruption shocks us defamation is of a different character defamation is more political in character it has to be absolute protection millards and therefore millards this anguished conclusion of the majority bearing in mind what weighed with the constitution makers bearing in mind the historical background of privilege is not even 25 years later something which would shock the conscience of this court millards to repeat millards political corruption is a fact of modern political life and millards perhaps historical and ancient political life also millards yeah and this and i'm going to emphasize when i come back to my written submission millards it is not that the constitution gives a complete carte blanche after all the privileges of parliament are to be exercised by parliament itself against its members and we may trust parliament to do so on given occasions in the early years millards in the provisional parliament and i've given that instance in my written submission i'll take my lot to that straight away millards a member one mr h g mudgal was expelled by the house for millards accepting a bribe to ask a question in the house from 1952 to rajaram pal in 2006 it is not that parliament has not exercised its power and so the constitution leaves it to parliament to take care of aspects of political morality then i would respectfully submit that the court out of a sense of moral outrage ought not to proceed further and that is the error in justice agarwal's judgment bullets and i'm going to place play that place that passage straight away justice agarwal is conscious of the fact that the power to expel is there but the judgment says that is not a satisfactory solution that's the fundamental error bullets and i say this with great respect that it is not for the court to find perfect solutions to all moral dilemmas political problems political conundrums bullets But Mr. 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 Ramchandran, if you really interpret 105-2, the Justice Barucha rejected the submission of the Attorney General uh, based on the words in respect of. Let's look at 105-2. What does it say? Yes, yes. Let's go. No member of Parliament shall be liable to any proceedings to any proceedings in any court in respect of anything said or any vote given by him in Parliament or any committee thereof. So what this really means is that a member of parliament it says shall be liable to any proceedings shall be liable to means shall be answerable to or shall be held to account in any court so once a member of parliament has either cast a vote or has spoken they will not be answerable in any court of law in any proceeding for the vote which they have been we vote which they have cast or the speech which they have made that's all and that dovetails with clause 1 clause 1 begins by saying there shall be freedom of speech in parliament and then 2 says that freedom of speech in parliament is protected by saying you will not be held at, held to account in a court for a speech which you made no court can say that well why did you make this speech 
or you're answerable to us as a judicial institution in respect of a speech which you made or a vote which you cast. That's the purpose. This does not really seek to implicate other aspects, such as an aspect of criminality. Now, some aspects of political morality are dealt with by the constitution itself in the 10th schedule, for instance. Not sure, please, okay, which so came later, effect, which came later. But. Which came much later. But, for instance, the 10th schedule will deal with certain aspects of political morality, namely crossing of floors, casting, uh, acting against the whip, or, uh, you know, a defection within the, from the political party. But to read the words in respect of have to be construed appropriately. You're right. Normally, in respect of is not treated as a word of limitation. In respect of is always interpreted in a very broad perspective. In relation to, in respect of. But what is in respect of what? In respect of anything said or any vote given. Will this go beyond a criminal consideration underlying the speech or the vote? Of course, there is a possible view. I mean, you can't, that's why, you know, we, that's why that judgment is there. Obviously, too, the majority has taken that view and we respect that view. What seems to have weighed with the, with the, with the majority is that if you cannot be responsible in respect of a vote given or a speech made, to any court in a proceeding, then the underlying motive for the casting of the vote or the speech, whether it is criminal or otherwise equally immune Lord from please. court proceedings. Lord Lord please, Lord and the I... question is whether you therefore stretch that in respect of to cover an underlying motive or an underlying consideration being criminal as also being immune or whether does it stop with the vote cast or the speech which is given and does it really also extend to a possible criminal uh, uh, misdemeanor in the casting of the vote or the making of the speech. Just a respectful refinement of what my Lord the Chief Justice has put to me. One question is, the way you read sub-article 2 is perhaps is in two parts. The first part relates to the vote given by him in the parliament. Anything said or vote given. The later portion which comes after end, after the comma, talks about liability with respect to publication by or under the authority of either house of the par parliament of any report paper vote or proceedings this later post, later portion talks about the liability with respect to publication etc the first part talks about the vote as well as what is said there is a distinction there sorry to interrupt also member of parliament versus person First part is member of parliament, second part is person. Ah, no person shall be. So so there is a clear distinction there. So, whether with uh, the expression in respect of attached to the first part is a question perhaps that just came to my mind. Lord Chief, please, Lord. That is one thing. Lord Chief, please. Does it attach to a pristine situation where a member of a parliament says or votes in a parliament? This has to be read in consonance with the first uh, sub-article 1. Maybe there is perhaps a distinction there because as they say publication also yes, and what is published with respect to the proceedings of, of, the, of the house also attaches some amount of immunity. Okay. That is what is said. Okay. So, the Lok Sabha debates, the Rajya Sabha debates. There could be something, yes, words. And that will also attach to a staff of the uh, legislature. That is, yes, the Secretary yes, General of the Lok Sabha. Yes, but it's the printer and publisher also. Mm -hmm. prints, yes. Who will publish a report of the text of the proceedings in the parliament would be equally immune because no person shall be liable in respect of the publication. Therefore, the use of the word person, person. because they are expanded Much broader. beyond the member themselves. It is a long, long uh, English uh, parliament. Private public. Right, right, right. That's buyer under the authority. Something which is an authorized publication of parliament. So, which is that expression which connects, so to say, as the later part uses the expression in respect of, so far as the first part is concerned? Yes, sir. That's mm -hmm. the question. That's a question. Lots of business. But otherwise, uh, the other principle that the concept, the, the activity of corruption which occurs outside the host has got nothing to do with what is said and the vote which is being made in the parliament. That's the first part of it. But what, according to you, controls that? Yes, ma'am. The first part. I'll read the sentence again. I'll read the clause again. No member of parliament 
consequence of the speech made, consequence on the publication made. These are the only two conditions. Lot should be. He doesn't. Everything happened. Prayer. That is where I'm. That is where in respect of comes for the. I'll give you one more. Suppose a bribe has been taken by a member of the legislature for casting a vote in a particular manner, for making a speech. A court cannot therefore say that please invalidate this vote because it was motivated by a bribe. Suppose a person is convicted for the offence of bribery. Can a court say that therefore that vote should be excluded in computing the parliamentary majority? Suppose twenty members of the legislature are proved to have accepted a bribe. That vote is still a valid vote, not passed in favour of or against the motion. Contextualised clearly, it is contextualised in the first part as well as second part when they use that in respect of a vote and what is said and in respect of what is published. Not sure, please. Minutes both are very clearly contextualised. Not sure, please. Minutes and minutes in my respectful submission. You can't say impugn a resolution passing a legislation or passing the budget. On the ground that any of the votes which were cast to pass the finance were vitiated by vitiated by a criminal mis wrongdoing. If that be so, if I may. But that immunity which attaches to the vote which is cast does not immune does not attach to the the criminal the crime which takes place independent of the casting of the vote or the rendering of the speech. My respectful submission is my respectful submission is. If the crime, the anterior crime, so let us assume minutes, and that is a matter of law minutes. There can be no two views about let it. That the it, offense. Uh, let me put your argument at its best, at the highest. No, sir, that the anterior crime of accepting a bribe for casting a vote or making a speech is integrally related no, sir, to the casting of the vote or the making of the speech. That's that is my argument minutes, and that's and my. And once both are integrally related, according to you, the men immunity must attach to both. In respect of from Justice Narsimha's question also, is and the reason of highlighting what you have said of in the previous quotation of Blackstone, he says it becomes necessary because of the reason that the executive has a control. Over the members through some manner or the other, so therefore the need for an immunity to extend even to that. Grateful. That's your argument. I'm grateful. And apropos the observation. Just a little bit. What what she is saying is this: the case where let us assume there's a bribery, voting takes place. Then on the question of validity of the vote, a decision is made within the parliament that cannot be questioned. Not cannot. That undoubtedly can be. To that extent, there is there is a there is a casual connection. Not sure. Not with Sandy that. But other things they stand apart. Then criminality stands apart. That but that has got nothing to do with the parliament. But that is where my argument that in respect of to that extent, the parliament can the house can go into whether bribe is there or not, whether vote is there or not. To that extent, it can go into to to either validate validate or invalidate the vote. It can go into.